Sword of Atlas is a tactical role-playing game where the players take control of a party of travelers pitted against AI opponents, where fast-paced decision-making meets grid-based combat in a world where your actions determine the fate of your party. That's a lot of words to say we are taking a turn meter action system, putting it on a grid, and playing it out in real time. So this week, we're talking to Ann Goodman, who is the vision holder of the game. Yeah, no, vision holder. <laughs> So Anne originally pitched the game back when we as a cohort at EAE were deciding what games we wanted to work on for Thesis. Anne pitched the idea of Sword of Atlas. You've obviously done a lot of artwork afterward and have been involved in narrative, but maybe just going back to the very beginning, could you talk a little bit about the genre and why this was the game you wanted to pitch? Yeah, sure. Um, so I kind of grew up playing a lot of TRPG games. I played a lot of the older Final Fantasies, grew up playing a lot of Fire Emblem too. So that genre kind of holds a special place in my heart. You know, just thinking to like games that I've enjoyed playing, I thought like, okay, well, what if I mash together Final Fantasy and Fire Emblem somehow? The big thing with Final Fantasy is the ATB meter. The big thing with Fire Emblem is like the grid. So. Yeah, that was kind of like the basis for the idea. I feel like it was a pretty raw and rough idea <laughs> to begin with. Has what the game has become after a semester of work, has it been surprising to you? Like, I guess the question is, is this what you expected it would be when you were pitching it four months ago? So much more in depth with all of the systems and like all of the design than I ever thought it would be. So it, it has been really cool to like watch it coalesce into this wondrous thing, essentially. Yeah. But it is really like cool to see all these people coming together to make this game. Still only two people on the team doing art, uh, which is kind of what you're focused on. So art is kind of the bottleneck in a sense. So how, what's that been like for you? It's been pretty like challenging since the beginning because you know, initially we were like, okay, well, what if we just do like a 2D pixel art game? But then it was it was kind of hard to find people who were like interested in working on that. Like a lot of people want to do 3D stuff. It was still just me and like how Tian, the other artists. So it still became this question of like, okay, well, how are we going to make all the art for this game? And both of us have very different skill sets. I am a 2D artist through and through. He's 3D. You know, we had like all these weird compromises with the art. And then eventually we were able to kind of get people from other teams to help us. So that's been like a huge boon because they've done such a phenomenal job. So much like happier with where the art is now that we have that extra help. The visual target was going to be something kind of similar to Octopath Traveler. I don't think I realized how difficult that would be to do. I'm still pretty happy with like where it's going and we're still kind of getting to like that, you know, stylized cutesy diorama kind of feel, which is what I think Octopath Traveler kind of has. So it's, it's different than what I thought it would be, but I'm still happy with it. So I mostly just focus on the character portraits for narrative. Um, and then I hand those off to Emily who does pixel art and she does a much more phenomenal job at it than I could ever ever do so I'm very grateful to her. So there's a set number of characters and enemies and it's all kind of narratively interwoven so do you start with the portraits and the narrative takes over do you build the portraits off of narrative how does that work? I ask for kind of like basic like physical descriptors of how people imagine the characters to look. For me, like one thing that's really important when I'm drawing the portraits is I want them to like reflect whatever character class that is. So if it's a mage, like this person should look like a magic user. If it's like a warrior, they should look like a warrior. The games that I was looking at for inspiration were Genshin and then Fire Emblem. They're really good examples of like how to do that style. Like, very well and yeah so those have kind of been my like visual targets you've also been involved in writing for the game as well mm -hmm. so this semester mostly so what have you been doing there and what's that process been like i really wanted to write our healer character uh who's a bard his name is gregory arius or greg arius if you will we love um <laughs> I have actually had this like idea for this character for a very, very long time. So back in like the early days when we were like talking about narrative and what that would look like, I was like, guys, I don't care. I have to have this character in here. I don't care like what it will take. So I'm very lucky that everyone was very like accommodating of me and that idea. It's been really interesting for me because I've never collaborated with other writers before. So 
you know, sometimes like I'll get feedback from people. I'm like, well, personally, I disagree with that. But, you know, obviously like it's, I have to like listen to other people. Like this isn't just like my character and like my game anymore. It's everyone else's. So yeah, it's, it's been, it's been really fun. Thanks again, Anne, for talking to us today about the beginnings of Sword of Atlas and the narrative and as well as the art. So appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you.